gut, es ist kurz nach 18 Uhr. Ich okay, it is a few minutes after six and I would like to welcome you most cordially to our Listen to the East, uh, the third one this year, following Ukraine, uh, being a topic on the day of the start of the war on the 24th of February and uh, following uh, Serbia, which took place in late March, so prior to the elections. We are now uh, having a look at Kosovo. I'd like to welcome you on behalf of the three organizers the Central Committee of the German Catholics and the German Academy uh, Berlin and on behalf of Renovabis, the uh, Catholic Aid Organization for Eastern Europe. I'm Matthias Stöhr, I'm head of the Department uh, Communication and Cooperation at Renovabis and I would like to draw your attention to the fact that this event will be offered in German and English so you can select uh, the uh, channel or the language you need Need. There is a globe, an icon. If you click, then you can select the respective channel, German or English. I, Ukraine, of course, is in the focus of our attention, but in addition to our concern uh, regarding Ukraine and people who are uh, refugees, we must not lose sight of the others. In particular, the Balkans is very important since the Balkans is also still a powder a keg and there are lots of pending questions. Kosovo, which we will focus on tonight has um, new perspective on the 4th of May. Minister President Albin Kute was in Berlin uh, visiting uh, Scholz, Federal Chancellor of Germany, and on this very day, uh, Federal Chancellor Scholz also uh, uh, welcomed Pusic. Uh, so it is uh, clear that because of the non-recognition of Kosovo by Serbia, there is still some, let's say, uh, yeah, development is uh, still impeded, but we do not want to look at large scale politics, but at the concrete situation. And we want to uh, look at um, refugees and uh, children. And uh, we are happy to have two representatives of two important institutions who are active in this field. On the one hand side, uh, Mrs. Leverage from uh, Concordia. Concordia is an NGO for work with the children and young adults and uh, also has been an important partner for us for Renovabis in many countries, also Moldavia and uh, Bulgaria, uh, Moldova. And then our second speaker is uh, Mrs. Shahani um, of the Jesuit Refugee Service, uh, JRS. They are an important protagonist in aid to refugees and we have a cooperation with Renovabis in the context of refugees. Is, um, from Ukraine, but also in Kosovo, very important um, protagonist in uh, Kosovo, and I'm sure we will be hearing it, has become a country where refugees also have arrived. And uh, the moderator is Mr. Nölke. I would like to welcome him most uh, cordially. He will in introduce our two uh, panelists or uh, speakers. And Mr. Nölke um, also um, should be introduced. So so I'll take care of that. Uh, you are program coordinator at Caritas Austria for uh, uh, Western Balkans, and you therefore are very much familiar with the region. You started working with Caritas in 2010, first with the Deutsche, the German Caritas, and then Caritas International. And uh, you were based in uh, the south of Caucasus and in uh, Greece and within Germany in the uh, framework of uh, aid to flood uh, victims. And uh, then you uh, changed to um, Caritas um, Austria in 2013. And I, I'd like to give the floor to you. We are very happy to have you. Thank you, Mr. Dürr. Um, welcome. Um, to all participants to our Listen to the East event. I hope the um, audio is good and you can hear me well. Um, just one information before I start um, introducing our two speakers for today. Um, as you're familiar, you can um, enter questions whenever they come to your mind in the chat. So um, please, yeah, don't be afraid. You can always um, uh, 
you can always write your um, questions in, through the chat function, and then we will pick it up and um, take it, consider them uh, at a later stage of the discussion. So um, I would like to welcome today, first of all, Ms. Oyana Shabani. Ms. Oyana Shabani is the country manager for the Jesuit Refugee Service, Kosovo, since 2018. Um, she graduated in psychology and she has a master degree on social policy and child well-being. From 2011 to 2017, um, Oyana has been working for World Vision Albania and Kosovo in child protection programs in Albania and in a peace building project in Kosovo. Oyana has ex extensive experience in the fields of migration, advocacy and training in human rights. She has a demonstrated history as a trainer in local, national, and on the European level. Since 2016, Oyana is a board member of the Italian organization Comitao Gemilai Colletordo in Europa. And from 2019, she is part of the pool of experts for the Southeastern European Youth Network. Warm welcome to um, Oyana. And um, we have Ms. Mirella Lavric. Uh, Ms. Mirella graduated um, from the Faculty of Sociology, Psychology and Pedagogy at the University of Bucharest in Romania. And she holds a bachelor degree in social work. Um, she has a master's degree as a supervisor and a postgraduate academic diploma in public administration. Um, Mirella has more than 20 years experience in the field of social services in Romania and in a number of countries in the South and Southeastern Europe, among them, of course, Kosovo. She has worked both with international, national, public and private organizations, especially in the field of social services, community development and child rights protection. She acted as a consultant for the World Bank, USAID, UNICEF, and others, uh, mostly for developing strategic plans for evaluations and methodologies. She has participated in the development of the legal framework for regulating social services in Romania and is the author of the child protection policy of Concordia Social Services, but also on a manual for implementing this policy. I would like now to um, start um, with an opening question to Ms. Oyana. Oyana, um, as it is in your organization's name, your main focus are refugees. Could you tell us a little bit about the process? What happens once a person seeking international protection seeks foot, uh, puts his foot on Kosovo soil? Um, how does the procedure start? How, how do we have to imagine that? Uh, thank you very much. First of all, thank you for inviting me and for giving me the space to share uh, the situation of Kosovo in the perspective of uh, migration issues. Uh, well, um, as you know, Kosovo is the youngest country in Europe because it became independent only in 2008. And um, in all these years, uh, from the independence till now, we had people coming and asking for asylum. Uh, Kosovo has a, a long history with migration because Kosovo people uh, have been migrants uh, themselves. So it is supposed that uh, people who are working in this field, they should perfectly know and um, empathize the, the migrants that are coming. But still, uh, it looks like there are some, <laughs> some somehow some challenges. Um, according to the Ministry of Internal Affairs and according to our work, the work that JRS has been doing um, since 2010, uh, when we focused in, in uh, asylum seekers and refugees, the numbers of uh, people asking for asylum in, in Kosovo has been increasing uh, year by year. Um, from 2000. And uh, 14 till 2018, the biggest number of people came, coming were from Afghanistan mostly. And then from 2015 until now, the biggest number of people coming are mostly from Syria. 
Um, the, um, in Kosovo, we have a law for foreigners, which provides some legal protection for all asylum seekers uh, immediately when they arrive in, in Kosovo. Uh, there are different ways of reaching uh, Kosovo territory. We have uh, the largest number of asylum seekers who enter uh, legally and they register immediately themselves at the police station in the border or uh, in every police station around Kosovo or they just go directly to the Asylum Seeker Center, which is uh, located in Magure, um, which is in Ligian municipality. Um, well, when, they, when asylum seekers reg register themselves, uh, they are accommodated in this, uh, in this center of asylum seekers, which has very good infrastructure. Um, they have daily meals, hy hygienic packages, um, they have also recreation spaces, sport facilities. There is also a library that can be used from beneficiaries in the center. Uh, and, the, and they have, but at the other hand, they have some restricted movement rights until they are uh, issued with an identity card. Uh, when they register themselves and they ask for asylum, of course, it depends uh, where they do the request. If the request is done at the police station, for example, it's the border police or the police that is working in every station around Kosovo who does the registration of these persons in the national database uh, or and then they are um, uh, they are taken the fingerprints they are uh, taken some uh, pictures and they are registered with all the um, and they also share all the, the papers that they can maybe they have with them even though in the biggest number of the cases they don't have any uh, documents with them um well let's say that um asylum seekers that are coming in kosovo they are staying for a medium time of uh three weeks up to four weeks maybe uh, but this this time was changed when the COVID um came and people were somehow stuck in uh, in kosovo for a longer period um, mostly Kosovo is seen as a transit country and the reason why the asylum seekers leave, maybe it's related with the fact that Kosovo is, as I mentioned, a very young country, but it's still also very fragile and uh, the, um, it has a very low economic condition. So the perception of uh, asylum seekers is that in European countries, maybe they can have a better life, maybe it's very easier for them to, to find a job, which they cannot uh, have in Kosovo. Um, but things looks like are changing a bit, especially in the last two years, when uh, we were faced with some asylum seekers who really were determined to leave in Kosovo, uh, who um, achieved to, to stay uh, in Kosovo and to, to go through all the procedure of asylum seeking, which by law it's up to six months, but in some cases it can uh, take uh, up to one year. For the moment, uh, we have uh, 20 people who granted the international protection, which are from Middle East, mostly from Syria. And um, uh, some of them, a small number of them are from uh, Palestina. So um, now we, uh, we were facing a lot of new things with asylum seekers, but now we are also facing some very new things when it comes to the integration of these people who are aiming to live in Kosovo and who are determined to live in Kosovo. So um, this is why with, uh, with the help of Renovabis, we were implementing a project which was covering both asylum seekers and uh, refugees to support them. Because um, in, in Kosovo, JRS is the only organization which is on daily basis present in the centers offering, um, offering different services and offering support uh, to, to asylum seekers and uh, also visiting the families of the persons who granted the status of refugees in, in Kosovo. Um, maybe I can also share a bit what are the, what are the services that we provide. Um, we, of course, we adapt to the needs of our beneficiaries. Um, with the asylum seekers in the centers, uh, which are still waiting for a response from the ministry, if they, if they will be eligible to leave or not in Kosovo, 
Uh, we organize different uh, activities, social activities within the center. We offer them Albanian language course because we think that it is very important for asylum seekers to start their integration phase since day one when they come. So uh, Albanian course uh, is uh, available to all asylum seekers. Um, and then we offer also computer course to help them maybe to learn uh, how to prepare themselves uh, for, for the labor market in Kosovo, to, to, to learn how to read a CV, uh, how to, uh, sorry, how to write a CV, how to use maybe the basic uh, programs in, in, uh, in computer and, and so on. And then uh, we have also, um, we, we support asylum seekers because as per regulation of, uh, of, of the center it is that each asylum seeker who comes, they should go through uh, the first checkup and then uh, they need to be followed up in case they have uh, difficulties, health problems, health issues. So uh, we support them. Uh, my colleague um, accompanies them uh, anytime they need to be uh, to, to have these checkups in the health centers and also we provide all the medicines prescripted by, by the doctor. Uh, at the same time, uh, we organize uh, some um, uh, not only uh, social activities within the center, but we organize also some excursions and uh, we started recently also to organize some joint activities between asylum seekers and community members. Because if I mentioned earlier that asylum seekers are not, um, maybe they don't see their future in Kosovo, it is also for community members which see asylum seekers not so very, uh, um, uh, not so very welcomed in Kosovo, let's say it like this, maybe because of the stereotypes, maybe because of the prejudices, but uh, or because maybe they think that now that these people are coming can take something away from, from the Kosovo people, which is not the case. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, this is why we started to have these joint activities and to, to see and to make them understand that actually uh, nothing bad comes from these people who are asking for asylum in, in Kosovo. Then in the same time, we are working with people who already granted the status of refugees in Kosovo. Uh, we have uh, this small number of people, but that has a lot of uh, uh, needs for, for support. We have some families and some single uh, uh, men who are um, who are based mostly in, uh, in the surroundings of Pristina. And we have uh, one family and then one other person who are uh, one in Ferizai and one in Podujeva, which are not so far from Pristina, but still they feel a bit more like isolated from, from the rest of uh, uh, refugees. Uh, we are supporting them with, uh, with the integration process. Uh, last year, um, we provided um, um, JRS supported the ministry with uh, with um, creating this curricula of integration, uh, which uh, states um, clearly step by step what should a refugee go through to to be integrated in Kosovo. And now we are starting to implement the very first activities of this uh, curricula, which uh, foresees uh, accredited uh, language course. Um, uh, there are some lessons uh, regarding the culture and the history of Kosovo, and then there are some uh, social activities between refugees, but also community members. Um, yeah, this is in general what uh, what we are doing in Kosovo and how it how it uh, works here. Um, comparing with other countries, maybe the numbers may, may sound very small, but uh, for, for cost of a situation, these numbers are, are very considerable, uh, considerable because um, it looks like cost of our government is learning by doing. Uh, these are all new things and uh, they still don't have, um, let's, see, let's say, the, the human resources, but also um, in general, they don't have the, the, the capacity to deal with all the people that are coming and uh, leaving uh, from Kosovo. Okay, thank you very much, Oyana. Um, Mirella, um, Concordia has the main focus on children from vulnerable households. Um, in the last weeks, we could see as soon as we opened any newspaper or as soon as we opened any homepage, 
of any news sites. Um, one of the main news, ap apart from the war of Ukraine, was an, but as a direct implication of it, were rising prices. So I think it's uh, one of the main talks in um, in Germany, in Austria, on the Western Balkans, people speaking about petrol prices, people speaking about the price of cooking oil, will there be a shortage of this and that goods, but how would you, or which effects basically have these already high prices for basic consumer goods for um, children and their families in Kosovo? Thank you, Tobias. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, and thank you for inviting me to this uh, presentation. It's uh, really an honor for me to introduce Concordia to all of you. Um, especially because Concordia does not have so much history, let's say, in, in, in Kosovo, but it has in, uh, in Romania, because uh, in Romania it has been established immediately after the revolution in 1990. So there is uh, there already since 30 years. So Romania is the oldest country has uh, for Concordia interventions as, uh, in, and Kosovo is the youngest one. Um, and uh, we managed to uh, set up uh, this uh, organization uh, in, in Kosovo as a national association. So based on the, the national uh, uh, legislation uh, back in uh, December 2020. So somehow in the middle of the pandemic period, uh, which was a challenge for us, but we uh, can, I could uh, really say that it was a uh, um, a great success uh, considering all this, uh, these facts and, uh, um, you know, this uh, kind of uh, uh, turning to the uh, virtual meetings and uh, uh, establishing all the documentation and administrative things uh, uh, that way. So um, coming to your question, indeed, uh, I would uh, actually um, continue what what Oriana mentioned about Kosovo as being the youngest uh, European country, I would also say that uh, it holds actually a sad record of being also the poorest country in Europe, according to the statistics and uh, considering the um, um, uh, capital, uh, the, the, the income per, per person, which is uh, around uh, 4,500 uh, US dollars, which is the uh, obvious is the, 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 the smallest in, in comparing with the other countries. And of course, uh, that was uh, one of the reasons and uh, um, an argument uh, for Concordia to, to decide to to come in this country and to support uh, to support uh, uh, the population uh, here, especially when it is about uh, children, um, because according to the statistics and uh, uh, the feasibility study that we conducted uh, in, uh, in 2020 before the decision to set up this organization, of Concordia in, in Kosovo, every second child lives in poverty and one in five in extreme poverty. And this is uh, applying, especially when it is about Roma, Ashkalian, Egyptian children. So a majority of children which are uh, served by, by Concordia in Kosovo are coming from these uh, ethnicities. Um, Concordia took over a um, center that has been built uh, back in uh, 2018 by um, a, another organization, which is uh, Association Loyola Gymnasium. Uh, this transit center, as it, it, it is called, uh, due to the fact that it is located um, at the margin of a prison city in the way to, to Pristina. Um, um, it, it is actually now uh, taken over by Concordia and uh, it's all operational starting with 1st of January 2021. So we are now in our second year of activity in, in Kosovo and um, managed to organize several type of interventions, several type of social and educational services uh, uh, to support not only the children, but we extend it actually to uh, this support uh, towards their families. 
what does it mean? It means that we actually started to professionalize the, the staff. So um, um, going further uh, from only providing homework and tutoring activities for the children uh, coming in the center, uh, either before or after the school or for those uh, uh, that are uh, with the kindergarten age, let's say. Um, we um, recruited uh, professionals from the field of psychology, social work, uh, uh, professional teachers, uh, nurse, um, who having uh, this um, uh, as a priority to provide an integrated type of social and educational and health services for the children coming to the center, but as well as for their parents and uh, um, let's say um, um, bigger sisters uh, or uh, uh, brothers, which are uh, usually um, left aside when it is about uh, finding uh, uh, job opportunities uh, or being employed uh, in the country um, from our uh, one and almost half a year experience, but also according to the statistics, um, young people coming from Roma, Ashkalian, Egyptian families, uh, they are a bit, let's say, discriminated. Uh, on one hand, on the other hand, uh, most of them are dropping out of school at early ages and actually um, their chances to, to find a, a job um, are really um, minimal. So therefore, uh, besides supporting children coming for homework and tutoring uh, uh, to our center, we uh, established um, also um, a service uh, which is, uh, we call it uh, um, vocational counseling for young people. Um, and this is something similar with uh, what uh, Oriana uh, mentioned about uh, uh, kind of support for the refugees. They are providing, we are also providing for the young people the possibilities to understand what does it mean to be employed to to become a, 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 an employee on the uh, on the market on the labor market um, to develop their CVs, but also uh, to provide them uh, to them the support to uh, either to continue the education with uh, catch up classes, uh, either to to be um, enrolled in the vocational uh, training and. Uh, obtain a, a certificates that uh, allows them to allow them then further to find uh, uh, jobs uh, in the labor market. Um, besides this, uh, considering the fact that the families are struggling with poverty, but besides poverty, there are also other kind of factors which are um, um, combining uh, uh, combined uh, produce let's say um, um, very difficult situations uh, for most of the families which may uh, be either health issues either um, lack of finding jobs for the parents uh, or uh, lack of uh, um, uh, getting any kind of social benefits. Um, we uh, actually uh, try to support even the parents by establishing a so-called school for parents as well as women support group to um, try to educate um, uh, these parents, these families in order to understand what can they do, first of all, to uh, raise their children uh, a bit different, let's say, in order to support them to continue their education? That would be something, um, let's say, that could break the circle of poverty in their families and uh, uh, to try to um, uh, somehow change their mindset when it is about, uh, let's say, um, um, encouraging their young daughters to get married uh, uh, at early uh, ages, um, especially in this Roma, Ashkali, and Egyptian families. Um, of course, another uh, phenomena is uh, labor, child labor, and uh, domestic violence, um, which are, let's say, um, issues 
uh, that we are uh, dealing with and our team of professionals working in an um, individualized uh, approach um, and using this case management approach, uh, working together, um, we are trying to support these families uh, on different uh, uh, areas. Um, by the end, uh, let's say, aiming to, to help them um, move further or um, uh, solve any kind of uh, difficulties that may may have. Of course, we are also trying to give them um, uh, food packages uh, because sometimes they do not actually have uh, anything, uh, including, uh, for example, during uh, the last uh, winter season, we even provided some um, wood for heating because um, otherwise uh, children would have been uh, in, uh, in severe uh, um, risk. Um, our center actually became um, kind of a community center where the where the families living in the neighborhood of uh, uh, of the center um, in this outskirts of the prison and city uh, are coming uh, whenever are having difficulties whenever there is a crisis situation. Um, besides the fact that uh, all the children um, uh, are coming uh, in the center for different type of activities, um, besides, as I mentioned, uh, homework, tutoring, uh, we will organize also leisure activities for them, um, for psychological counseling, um, um, social counseling for parents uh, in order to obtain their uh, uh, social rights, like, for example, um, to become eligible to apply for different kind of uh, social schemes to obtain social benefits. Although it's this, it, the, the amounts are rather small, for them it is important as, as long as there is no even not even a, um, a salary which is coming on a monthly basis uh, in their families. Besides, there have been some steps that the government uh, already uh, uh, done. Uh, for example, a couple of months ago, it has been introduced uh, uh, this uh, child allowance, monthly child allowance. Of course, it's a small amount of money, but uh, um, there is something that the family with, uh, with children can benefit with. But the, the biggest problem for the time being, and we are trying to, to support the families which are registered to our services is that they do not know their rights. So this uh, social counseling, um, it's a really important uh, component uh, in, our, uh, in our work. And for this reason, um, we have uh, already recruited uh, uh, two social workers um, and uh, besides uh, them, there is a psychologist, uh, a nurse, uh, two teachers, uh, three educators, and so on and so forth. So in total, we have altogether 23 um, uh, employees uh, for 150, 114 uh, children, which are coming um, uh, on daily basis, uh, either for early childhood education program, either for school program, education, um, leisure, music classes, and so on. Um, besides, we would like to expand, uh, actually we started already, and all these kind of inter new interventions and professionalization of our uh, work, it has been uh, possible uh, with the support of Renovabis, because uh, um, Renovabis was um, uh, supporting us since the beginning when we started our uh, work and later on, um, let's say we can, I, I could honestly say that it's our strategic partner since we have a program uh, that will run until mid of 2024 and which is actually supporting all these uh, uh, new interventions, all this uh, uh, professionalization of our intervention uh, and uh, expanding our services and target groups, um, as I mentioned, from children to, to parents, to young people, and also to rural areas of the municipality of Prizren. 
Brisbane is a city, but there is, the, it is also a municipality which uh, comprises uh, around 76 uh, uh, villages. Um, and uh, according to the, the UNICEF or World Bank uh, uh, studies, and of course, according to, to the Center for Social Work uh, uh, in prison, and most recently, according to some uh, to the conclusions of a social needs assessment that we organized in the municipality of prison, um, those living in families living in the rural areas, um, they are um, most isolated in the sense that they do not know their rights, they do not have any kind of services, um, social or health, um, they, they are uh, not uh, visited by, by any social worker from the Center for Social Work um, because there is uh, simply not, uh, not uh, there are not enough resources the Center for Social Work uh, has uh, in terms of human resources or other uh, financial and uh, material resources. So as, a, as an organization, we are coming to fill a gap and to try to support as much as possible um, a higher number of families which are struggling on daily basis with a different kind of uh, social health living um, uh, problems. Um, and uh, um, since every, since very uh, day that, uh, of our uh, work as Concordia uh, running uh, the transit center in, in prison, we wanted actually to provide to, to the children coming to the uh, to our center um, those basic, let's say, basic um, 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 provisions, uh, which means uh, a healthy, warm meal per day, um, health support, educational support and uh, preschool uh, um, type of education, which actually there are, these are the four main pillars according to the European strategy uh, for children's rights and European uh, child guarantee. So that that is the way <laughs> and in which Concordia is supporting uh, uh, children and their families um, in uh, in this municipality, um, and as I mentioned, uh, via a mobile team, uh, we will uh, develop this outreach kind of activities going to the uh, rural areas as well, where the there is the highest uh, need, um, and uh, we are really. Um, happy to be able to do this with all the resources that we also uh, received uh, from, from Renovabis and with our team of uh, professionals uh, really um, determined and committed to, to, to do this kind of work. Thank you very much, Mirella. Um, last year, um, we saw that the government in, in Kosovo changed and um, many young people, especially also the Kosovarian diaspora, they voted a government which was seen in many eyes as corrupt and incompetent out and they voted for a new political force and um, put a lot of hope in, in this new government. If we now look um, at the, the target groups, the people you are working for, um, being it people from abroad who come, come to Kosovo and seek international protection, or be it those from the more most vulnerable and marginalized parts of the Kosovar society, Concordia is working with. So um, were there any maybe legislative changes regarding these two target groups introduced or more resources being allocated for uh, by, by the state structures to help? and to, to, to support the people. Maybe we can start with um, Oyana and then Mirana. Um, well, <laughs> this is a difficult question, actually. Um, I don't know how to respond to this 
because yeah, that's true that the government changed. But uh, when it comes to migration issues, to be honest, uh, we couldn't see any change from the previous government, which means that uh, it doesn't look like migration is the top priority for our government. Um, well, actually, there has been some meetings in a very high level for the Ukrainian situation. Um, and uh, there has been this uh, working group where JRS has been part of to, um, to coordinate the arrival of 20 journalists, uh, Ukrainian journalists in Kosovo, and JRS is supporting um, with, um, now we need to see because the first journal, journalist came two weeks ago and she's still uh, finding herself uh, here. But uh, we we said that we would be happy to provide uh, Albanian language course in case she is interested because uh, for the rest of the things, um, the government is taking care. While it's different, for example, for uh, two other ladies that came from Ukraine, one with one kid and the other one with two kids, and they are accommodated in one of their relatives' house because she's married in Kosovo from uh, more than 10 years now, but they are still not deciding if they are going to ask for asylum in Kosovo or they will just be using this 90 days that is their right to, to stay in the territory of Kosovo. Uh, so um, I'm not sure if I can give a right answer, uh, but what I can uh, what I can share with you is that there is nothing new going on in terms of legislation when it comes to the migration issues. There are some um, there are some uh, working groups working on things that we are uh, that started one year uh, like before the the government was changed, uh, which are works related to new regulations for the integration of uh, foreigners in Kosovo, but not something uh, in a national level that can be uh, at least as far as I know that can be mentioned here. Thank you. Thank you, Oyana. And for, for Mirella, from, from your point of view, um, any legislative changes or maybe better resources for the state social welfare centers or um, economic support packages for, for, family who, for families who are um, suffering mostly now from this, um, um, first of all, COVID uh, consequences, now the, the um, inflation consequences and who are living in general uh, on the on a very let's say um, little um, economic um, income. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, I would say that uh, in this area, uh, as I mentioned already, uh, it has been introduced this child uh, allowance, monthly child allowance, as a general right for all the children in the country. Um, the level of it, it's about 10 euros, so not so much, but still, <laughs> uh, this is included according to the UN Convention of Ch on Children's Rights. Um, and uh, there are some social schemes, uh, the newly ministry that uh, um, actually uh, combined the Ministry of Labor and Social Welfare with the Ministry of Finance, which is now called the Ministry of Labor, Finance and Social Transfers. They are actually um, running some social schemes. And for example, a recent um, a social scheme was uh, um, uh, to provide food packages for the most vulnerable families all around the country. Um, food packages that could be uh, could value maximum 50 euro. Um, and we as an organization, we also apply to, to obtain uh, the possibility to um, get uh, a certain budget to distribute uh, to distribute 500 packages around the uh, Shuareka municipality, which is neighbor municipality with the prison municipality and also for the families which are registered in our um, in our uh, evidence. Um, so, yeah, of course, a food package of 50 euro is helping, um, but uh, it actually does not uh, 
um, they lead these families to um, get out from the from their poverty. Um, there are also some, uh, from my knowledge, there are also some some uh, grants which are allocated either uh, through the Center for Social Work or through um, um, some in partnership with some uh, NGOs which are um, having this uh, as a, their main uh, field of activity uh, to um, build uh, some houses for the most vulnerable ones. Um, and um, as long as they have a piece of land uh, on their name. So um, I would say that this is uh, um, this is also something that can be uh, it's worth to be mentioned. Uh, besides, uh, starting in 2019, actually it has been um, issued a new law on child protection, um, and uh, there are some working groups, uh, the level of the ministry, which are. Um, developing the secondary legislation in order to um, um, clarify or to further uh, um, develop uh, some, some requirements uh, introduced in this law. Among this, uh, it has been introduced the requirement of uh, um, having a, a license for all the NGOs working in the, the social field. Uh, which I, from my opinion, it's a good sign because uh, that means uh, all the NGOs working in this field should be um, really professionals and to provide uh, good and reliable and professional services to, to their uh, beneficiaries, either children or uh, families or disabled or elderly people. So this uh, is what I could do. Mention uh, from this part of them. Okay. Thank you, Mirella. We have now one question over the chat, which is directed to you. And the question is if there are any preventive programs um, regarding the early marriages within the Roma and Ashkali community. Um, I can answer the, in regard to our activities in Concordia. Um, we have a so-called uh, woman support group intervention, and uh, part of this uh, group there are uh, young uh, girls, uh, which actually uh, got married early in their lives and. Uh, we are actually trying to um, help them to continue their education and uh, um, let's say professional life. Uh, already, I mean, even though they they, they have uh, uh, their husbands and even children, uh, because somehow they are uh, willing, uh, you know, not to be so dependent. Uh, on their um, usually husband's families. Um, and of course, we have uh, this vocational counseling where part of the, uh, the members uh, uh, young girl, are young girls uh, from, the, from the community. And uh, we are uh, actually trying to um, educate them early, um, at early ages, I mean, starting with 14 for 15 years old, um, to towards continue their education, and actually, we managed to register for the first time uh, in this uh, neighborhood of the city three girls uh, for the high school. Most of the time, the the girls from this Roman Ashkali and Egyptian families they stop the school um, latest at. Um, at the end of the secondary uh, school, compulsory school, so eighth, ninth grade, but most of the time even earlier. Um, but the biggest, let's say, um, work that uh, we already started to, to put in practice is to educate the parents. That is why I mentioned to you, we also um, 
established a new intervention, which is called School for Parents, where we are trying to educate the parents um, and to make them understand that their young daughters have the same rights uh, as their uh, young uh, sons uh, to continue their education and uh, um, find, uh, take a, a job um, and decide upon their own lives. Uh, this is um, um, sensitive and long term kind of work, I would say, because it is about changing mindsets. So this is not something that can be done on the spot or soon, but uh, rather with uh, counseling, uh, rather with the uh, exchanging of experiences between families um, and uh, with using role models. This is uh, something that we can we can do in order to arrive to the point to make them understand. I hope I answered to this question. And if I can can ask you um, in your ex from your experiences, are the early marriages rather within Kosovo? Or is it also that young girls are being sent uh, abroad to, to marry um, some person they probably have never seen living in a European country? I'm asking because my uh, colleague, uh, Jelena Mitsovic, who works in Belgrade for the Caritas Counseling Center for Returnees, has had, especially after the COVID travel restrictions fell, uh, has had a lot of cases when um, for the price of for example, 3,000 euros a young girl, especially the age, as you say, as soon as the, the secondary school is finished, 15, 16 years old, 14 sometimes, um, are then being, let's say, sent to, to a family in, in Duisburg, München, and so on. Mm -hmm. Um, I can also answer from my uh, experience um, and I can tell you that when we took over the transit center, uh, we took over also seven uh, co-workers, uh, youngsters coming from the same neighborhood. So um, they have been, let's say, uh, first the first beneficiaries of the, the first activities that has been have been conducted with the children from Roma Ashkali and Egyptian families in this neighborhood, even before the, the, the building has been constructed for, for the center. Um, and uh, out of these seven uh, youngsters, uh, three uh, were uh, young girls. Um, one got married in the same neighborhood, and so she still lives in Kosovo and she's part of our uh, counseling activities. Uh, the other two got married um, and are now living in Germany. So, but they got married with Kosovo, Kosovars, uh, which are actually living and working in, in Germany. Very, very, I mean, this is always very, very sad to hear, but even if this is then happening in Germany, maybe then it's also a case for the for the uh, official authorities, for the police to to um, look into look into this. We have two more questions, despite I find this topic very interesting. Um, Mrs. Gavrich is asking um, for, maybe I give the question first to Oriana. Um, since you're working for a church organization, can you say something about the role of the churches within the society in Kosovo? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, as may, you may know, um, our uh, church in Kosovo is uh, very small <laughs> because we have a very small Christian population in Kosovo. And... Um, yeah, it has it has a lot of powerful activities, um, indeed, uh, but still we cannot talk about um, like let's say that 
people in Kosovo are so uh, fan of uh, the churches. Um, of course, our organization is um, run by Jesuits and is uh, always supported mostly by the churches. Um, and we are, of course, doing a very um, important work with the beneficiaries. And uh, what I can share with you something very interesting is that usually the population in Kosovo, starting from my uh, my circle of friends and family members and everyone, it's like, but you are you are working uh, like the church is supporting you and you are supporting Muslims. What's the point? <laughs> so the idea is that we are all the time sharing that actually we are supporting human beings and we are uh, working uh, inspired by the love of Jesus. So we are working under his, um, um, uh, we are we are having it, uh, him as our role model. So it's like we are trying to share. Of course, we don't um, we don't have this kind of direct activities in uh, splitting the uh, sharing the gospel with them or something similar. Uh, but we are trying to share um, Christian values with the beneficiary with the beneficiaries we have. Thank you, Ayana. If I have the correct figure um, at hand, it's the situation is that I mean, um, Kosovo with, with a very young population in in Europe um, is and which is largely affected by migration. Of course, also the the Catholic community is is affected, and at the moment, it's a little bit more than twenty thousand people in Kosovo who are who are Catholics, and. Um, Mirella, what would you say about the role of the church in the society? Um, what I can say is that uh, every single morning uh, in the center, uh, starting with 8.30, 8.45, uh, children are uh, gathering together with the entire staff and have the daily prayer. Uh, and during this time, um, they are, uh, you know, we formulate uh, formulating wishes for the day, um, but also they are reading uh, from the Quran as well as from the Bible. So uh, there is a dedicated um, um, calling which are uh, which is uh, actually in charge with the, um, selecting the team per, per each day and uh, she or he is looking for similar let's say verses from the Quran as well as from the Bible and uh, children are reading from both um, of course Jesuits and Catholic churches, uh, it's uh, a really important supporter and donor for, for our services. So, um, but you know, when it is about children, all of them are having the same rights, no matter their, uh, their uh, religion, the color of their skin. Um, so, for us, uh, working with children, this is not so important, I would say. Um, if I may, may shortly add, I think we all as um, faith-based, Catholic-based organizations, speaking of Caritas, I think um, through our um, daily actions of, of charity and um, the wide recognition also and the respect um, by, by people in Kosovo for, for the church. I think we people respect also the, the church and seeing the positive influence because of many, many uh, charitable actions. Uh, now we had some examples by you we, we looked at. Um, and I think that's um, I think that's that's a, probably one of the, the main points that I mean from humanitarian aid to social support, um, the, the church is very visible uh, in the country uh, through its concrete actions. Mr. Lenz um, is asking the following question um, that he writes, Kosovo is a relative small country. 
Melee challenges may not be solvable at the national level. Do your organizations cooperate with organizations in other countries? Uh, if so, on which topics? Maybe this time we can start with uh, Mirella and then Oyana can, can add. Uh, first of all, we collaborate with the, the countries in which Concordia has projects and programs, like in Bulgaria, Moldova, Romania, Austria, um, and uh, we share uh, experiences, we train our staff, we provide supervision, uh, we expose them to, to new, let's say, approaches when it is about uh, supporting uh, our children, our youngsters, our families. Um, and uh, secondly, uh, at the level of the country, uh, in Kosovo, we are having partnership agreements besides with the mayor, which is uh, one important uh, mayor of municipality of prison, which is uh, one important aspect uh, that I wanted to mention because it is actually um, guiding our work towards supporting the families in this municipality um, in the sense that it opens up uh, the possibility to, to go and find the most vulnerable ones directly and uh, uh, start uh, delivering uh, to them the, the, what they, they need from the social point of view. Um, we have with uh, uh, we collaborate very well with Terdezom uh, in in Kosovo with uh, Pema with uh, Diakonia. So um, our children are also benefiting by uh, psychotherapy, which is provided, for example, by Pema organization as well as by uh, as well as uh, for uh, speech therapy which is provided by, by Diakonia. So, um, uh, or with the SOS Children's Villages, um, we have this kind of, uh, of course, it's an important um, action for us as Concordia and Kosovo also to develop our, uh, let's say, network uh, of collaboration uh, with other NGOs which are uh, present not only in Kosovo, but also in other countries. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mirella. Oyana, what would you answer? Yes, um, yeah, of course, we also have different kind of collaborations. Um, starting with different organizations that are working on migration issues in Kosovo, such as, um, well, UNHCR, <laughs> UN Mission in uh, Kosovo, uh, and uh, its partner organizations, which are um, civil rights program in Kosovo, who supports us with our beneficiaries on legal advice, and also with uh, KRCT, which is another partner organization of UNHCR, which provides mostly um, um, psychological support for asylum seekers on uh, gender-based violence. Uh, and then we also collaborate with uh, other uh, JRS offices around uh, the region and in Europe. Um, JRS Kosovo is part of uh, JRS Southeast Europe Regional Office. And uh, we organize uh, different um, exchange of experiences, different trainings to, um, to, to increase our capacities in terms of responding better to the needs of our beneficiaries. And of course, we have uh, regular meetings uh, with all um, JRS Europe offices directors, uh, where we, of course, exchange and share uh, whatever uh, we think it's important um, with each other. Yeah, so uh, of course the collaboration uh, with the other organizations, especially on, on our daily work, uh, it's, very, it's very important because, for example, GRS Kosovo is not able to provide legal assistance. So this is why we refer the cases to the other uh, NGOs, uh, to the other NGO, because we think that it's important uh, to respond to the needs of our beneficiaries in a multi disciplinary way. So it's not only one organization that, that can do everything. And then um, 
um, UNHCR supports us um, very often with translators, which uh, we are not able to, uh, to have all the time on board, but they are very nice to us and they, they support us in, in, uh, in translating. Of course, when we don't have the translators, we, we use body language, we use Google Translate, every kind of way that we can. <laughs> we started to become very creative, but yeah, uh, the collaboration is very important. Uh, to to have better results. Yeah, being creative and collaboration with others are always um, extremely important cornerstones, I think, in our work. Um, Mr. Zabel is asking to Mirella if there is still the collaboration between the Transit Center and the Loyola, Loyola Gymnasium in prison. Yeah, of course, uh, we have since the beginning uh, a memorandum of understanding, mm -hmm. um, which actually uh, foresees, first of all, that some of the children uh, registered in transit to be able to be registered in uh, Scola Filor in primary school or in gymnasium. Uh, Loyola Primary School or Loyola Gymnasium. Uh, we also have um, uh, students from the gymnasium, Loyola Gymnasium, coming as volunteers in our activities, um, working with children for homework or for, for different kinds of uh, uh, leisure activities. Uh, we participate uh, either their children uh, in our uh, festivities or music concerts or vice versa um, and uh, of course we are having um, a very often football <laughs> football matches so yes we are in uh, in uh, we are working together actually we even we would like to apply for um, um, an application to obtain some funds to organize, uh, for example, a summer camp or something for, for, for the children. It's a summer music camp. Um, thank you, Mirella, for, for getting back to, to the question. Um, I would be interested um, during our preparation meeting um, when we spoke about this event today. Um, we had um, we were speaking about the the importance of a holistic. Always when we work with an individual person, we always have to think holistically. That's why I think Mirella was very important that you mentioned also that you include the parents, the kids here working together. You mentioned women supporting group. You mentioned school for parents. Um, all this is uh, very important. But you also mentioned the vocational courses and to disseminate the, the practical knowledge of what it means um, to have a job, to, to go every day to work and to, yeah, to, to be able to yeah, work in, in a certain um, hours on, on your job. So when we, when we discussed, we found one major obstacle, which I personally think also can be overcome through a direct work and the holistic work with the parents. That's um, for people who have, um, who received the social benefits, if I can call it like this, uh, even they are very, very low in, in Kosovo. Maybe you can tell the audience what it concretely means, how much it would be for a family who receives social benefits. And nevertheless, the, our main, um, main concern was that even the, the social benefits a family might receive is very low. Once a family member gets a job, even the, the person can be an adult person, but just living at home at his parents, um, there is a risk that the social transfers are being stopped, are being halted. And um, yeah, for the families, then this can be a, a certain insecurity because they have to reapply again in case the, the son or the daughter loses the job, or even one of the parents. And uh, you said also when there is something like a car, like a very old car. So there is a very, um, let's say there is a very, uh, um, it's very difficult to, to work and to motivate people um, in this way. 
maybe um, you, you can explain a little bit about the, the number of the social benefits and what you concretely do in order to um, work not only with the people for vocational education, but with the whole family in order to overcome the, the, the frightenedness of losing social transfers. Yeah, uh, as I said, according to this new child protection law issued uh, at the end of 2019, there have been introduced some kind of, let's say, uh, social and family uh, services, as they are called by, by the law. Um, and uh, that means different kind of social schemes um, that could be um, between 90 to 120 euro per month uh, to be allocated uh, for a family. Um, and of course, the current criteria uh, might uh, put some of these families at risk of losing, and they actually lose this, uh, this uh, social benefits uh, as long as they do not still meet these criteria, as you mentioned, if they have some, um, um, I don't know, property or how or a car or uh, uh, children are uh, uh, not younger than five and things like this. So. Um, as we are in the contact with the Department for uh, Social and Family Services within the Ministry, um, I can tell you that these criteria are under revision. Um, and actually, which we uh, fight for uh, would be to, to have individualized approach and uh, judge uh, the situation based on every single family uh, condition, um, not to apply uh, the same, let's say, set of criteria to allocate this, um, this uh, social benefits. So um, let's see what would be the, the outcome, outcomes of this, um, uh, changes which are under under uh, development. Uh, we know that uh, the work has started even at the beginning of last year, but there are no changes uh, for the time being. Um, we are trying through our counseling, social counseling, uh, to to identify any kind of rights these families. Uh, uh, might have, uh, but for example, I'm, I can give you an example. Uh, we had the opportunity to register some uh, young girls or young women uh, to some vocational uh, uh, training uh, training sessions uh, to obtain uh, some uh, occupational certificates, for example, as a cook, um, and um, they were uh, really um, afraid to register to these training classes just because they will lose then the social benefit uh, the family is getting. So it's kind of a vicious, vicious cycle um, currently, but I really hope that the things uh, will be changed soon. Let's hope the best, yeah. Um, Oyana, I have a question specifically for you since you are from, from Kosovo and you can probably give the most adequate answer on this. Um, how big is the social discrepancy within the society? I know that the average salary in Kosovo, which is officially published, the brutto salary relies around 460 euros a month. So how, how big is the social discrepancy within the society? And if, if there is really a middle class, and um, if you could say something about social cohesion. Uh, well, I, I'm not from Kosovo, I'm from Albania, but I have some information since I'm living in Kosovo. Uh, well, exactly, the, the biggest problem is that we don't have um, 
a middle class. We have only poor people and people who has a good salary at the end of the month. Um, I don't know in which source you have seen uh, this average um, salary, but I can say that the minimum salary in Kosovo is 170 euros. And um, the good salary, if you work in a public institution, is around 450 up to 500 euros per month. So now I leave you uh, the imagination to understand how a person can live or feed its family members with 170 euros or 450 euros in the best scenario. And then we have the, um, uh, in Kosovo, we have a lot of international people who are working in very um, important uh, agencies and um, um, international organizations or whatever you call it. Um, and they have completely different standards of living. So unfortunately, this is why I'm saying that we don't have a middle class and we cannot uh, talk about a good economical situation. Just I would just like to add uh, something that uh, a month ago, um, the minimum salary um, has been raised up to 240, uh, no matter the group age, uh, because um, before it used to be 130 for uh, persons younger than 24 mm -hmm. and 170 for uh, older persons, older, older employees. Now it has been raised up to 240, but still this is not enough. Um, and uh, there is a new methodology also to calculate the uh, taxes for, for the salaries, uh, which means that those higher salaries would be taxed higher. Um, for those, uh, I read the... Uh, um, I read uh, some some minutes of um, the prime minister uh, after meeting with the unions. Um, the unions requested the uh, uh, minimum salary of 400 euro, but uh, that was not approved at uh, the level of the government. So, yeah. 460 euros as average salary was the, the official note from the Kosovo Agency of Statistics, officially published. And yeah. um, I, I think since we, we spoke uh, about the salaries, I think um, just by the, the salaries Or Oriana mentioned, which are the reality in, in Kosovo, we can see that uh, especially the, the transfers from the um, diaspora are very, very important and for many people to, yeah. to make a living and to pay their bills and to get by by the end of the month, yeah? Okay, so it's uh, 20 past seven. Um, I would like to thank uh, all of you uh, that you took the time uh, this evening to listen to the East, uh, listen to um, Mirella from Concordia, listen to Oriana from the GSU Refugee Service. Um, I hope we could uh, answer um, your, your questions and um, you, you enjoyed uh, the, the discussion, the presentations. Um, thank you very much to, to Reno Vabis, who is the host of this event and, and giving us the chance to get this uh, direct insight. Um, so I would say, Mr. Dürr, if we could call it the night and um, from Freising and from, from Belgrade, where I'm currently, I um, we wish all of you um, to stay healthy and to be uh, in touch with us for the next Listen to the East event. And we are inviting you to visit Kosovo. Indeed. <laughs> we would love to host you here. Okay, and and thanks also to Tobias, the, mod the moderator of, of the evening, and to Mrs. Heller for translation. 
and we will continue, of course, our uh, Listen to the East series, and we will send the invitation again in good time. And thank you, Mirella and Orania, for sharing the insights into your work and uh, into the social situation of children and refugees in Kosovo. And we wish you very success in your important work and God's blessings. Thanks and good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice evening.